everyone. In this tutorial, we'll be extracting pieces from this Viking that you can find in Fab, and we're going to translate it into a metahuman to then turn into a wardrobe that we can apply to any other metahumans. The first thing we want to do is, as usual, keep your original save. So you can see that this one is the skeletal mesh. I am going to make a copy of it. The first thing we want to do as we have our copy here is open it up and we are going to be deleting the head since we are not going to be using it for the purposes of this. So what we need to do to modify the head here is we can go to model and then there's a couple of things we could do here, but I found that the easiest of them all is if we go to skin and we regenerate the polygroups, which by general, it doesn't have a polygroup. A polygroup is an amount of polygons, essentially the, the layman's term. And in here in polygroups conversion mode, we have from normal deviation, which is a problem. It's going to generate a bazillion polygroups. But if we go here and we check from connected trees, it's just going to create polygroups based on connected polygons, which is exactly what we want. So we're going to hit accept. It's going to generate those polygroups. And now that we have them, we can go to model and then we can go to polygroup edit. And that lets us, as you can see, select several things. Now, from by default, it's not going to select the faces, even though it's turned on. So I suggest that you turn off vertices and edges, and now it will select only faces. So we'll do a rough selection, something like that. You can overextend if you want. Uh, and select the shield. And what we'll do now is control and click to deselect the shield. So if we check this and we do W to move it, we can confirm that we are just affecting the head and effectively that's the case. So what we'll do now is go here on the left hand side face edit delete faces and we're not going to hit accept. So we're going to get rid of this guy and we're going to bring the one that we just created. We're going to send everything to the zero. As we send everything to zero, we now have a huge disconnect here, right? We have a character that's not only smaller, but it also has a different pose. And there are a couple of things that are not really working. So we got to do a little bit of work. Now, my main recommendation for you, if you're going to be using another skeletal mesh, is to create a modular rig for it. Now, I'll go into creating a modular rig in another video, but it's fairly simple. And what that will allow us is to actually go ahead and make a sequencer and bring that character into sequencer. What that will allow us is that we are going to now be able to add a control rig here into the sequencer. So now that we have the rig, the very first thing we need to do is actually scale down our character a little bit. So by selecting the skeletal mesh all the way to the top, because we want to do this on the skeletal mesh and not on the rig, scaling down the character in a way that it fits the shoulder and the neck. So that is perfect. I know it's, it's protruding out here. Don't worry, we're going to fix all of that. So that's step one, scaling it down so it kind of fits our metahuman. Step two is we are going to go into the global control over animation of our modular rig, and we are going to switch both legs and both arms from inverse kinematics to forward kinematics. And now it comes down to the annoying and boring part, which is we need to now match roughly, but as good as we can, the position of the metahuman with our new character. So we're going to start doing rotations on all of our controls here. What we want to do is try and cover the center, right? We want to get it so it's as centered as possible. Things like the globes, we are not going to do in this tutorial because they take a lot of time, but this is the exact same process for the globes. You just need to match them. This control and we move this control. So now that we have that information, what we want to do is mirror that information into the other side. And sadly, the poses tool with modular rigging is not working currently. The mirroring, for whatever reason, doesn't select the mirror controls, even though everything is set up correctly. So we're going to have to actually deal with this manually. So we got to select the shoulder. And the other problem is that we can't copy all of these and then go ahead and paste it on the other shoulder because that, for whatever reason, once again, does not work. It pastes nothing. So what we need to do is select one by one. I know this is annoying. This is the workaround. This is the process. And now that we have everything, both arms look to be correct, both mirror. Now we would need to do the same thing with the legs. So let me get back to you as that's done. So now we have the legs again, roughly placed. Keep in mind that it needs to be roughly accurate because we are going to be getting rid of the metahuman skin. We're not going to use it as per one of my other tutorials. And we're also going to be sculpting this a bit more as we reach the second section of this. So now that we have posed this, the problem is that we can't keep it here and that it's only posed here in sequencer. So we need to export this. Now, the way we need to do that is by baking an animation sequence of one single frame. And what we'll do is down here in uh, custom time range, we are simply going to do 
a one frame animation because we don't want to do anything else and we are going to export. So now that we did that, we can get rid of the control rig. I suggest that you create another sequencer and keep the control rig just in case. And we are going to now call for Viking host. And you'll see that it adapts exactly to what we were just doing. And again, this is only if you have a modular rig. If you have an FK rig, if you don't have a modular rig, that will also work. But now that we have this, we can go through the actual process of the previous tutorial and we're going to go to actor, convert SK Viking work to static mesh. And this is the object that we are going to be using. But there's one more thing that doesn't match here. If we go ahead and send it to zero, you'll see that there's a little problem, there's a little disconnection, and that is the scale. Because the scale we applied here in sequencer, as you can see, 0.96, is not being applied to our export of the static mesh. So we simply need to go ahead and copy that information on the scale and paste it on our new mesh. So now that we have this, we can start working on this static mesh as our original for the purposes of creating all of our layers. So let's go ahead and go into the modeling tools to very firstly Xform, bake transform and make sure that we are baking the full scale and what that will do is it will make that 0.96 into a one the original value and as we did in another tutorial what we can do now is use the vertex sculpt to try and make it so it sculpts a bit better around the metahuman once again don't worry because we are not going to be leaving all of these uh, sections live because we can actually ignore all of the information on the metahuman through the masks that we used on another tutorial. Now keep in mind that any changes that we do here are not symmetric, so we're going to be needing to do this work on both sides of the metahuman, which can be slightly annoying. You can, of course, export this static mesh and send it into Blender or any other tool of your choice to do a better job than what the modeling tools are currently uh, giving us, sadly. And we're just simply going to hit accept. Now, if nothing happens and if the material looks okay, we're safe. If the material breaks, don't use that tool because it's just gonna be a nightmare uh, of fixing. So now that we have this, we can finally go into actually splitting this mesh into separate clothing. What we're going to be doing is going into mesh here in the modeling tools. We're going to go to try select and the very important thing is to switch the selection mode to all connected. So what that will do is as we click on a section, it'll select all of the connected trace to that specific mesh. We could also go for by material connected, but that needs it to be uh, with connected triangles. So even though it has the same material, we could go material all and that will select the entire section that has the material. Uh, the entire top armor in this case, but the problem is I don't want to select the entire top armor. There are a couple of things I don't want to select. And I also want to separate it by other things, which are, for example, the fur. So the best one I could find is all connected. So that will select a section of all the connected geometry. So what I'll do is, in this case, is I am going to select the chest piece with shift click, we can deselect. I'm going to select these, I'm going to select that one, and I will end up needing to select all of these little pieces here because we are going to be doing uh, separation. So I got the selection roll on all of these little things by changing to material all, but it also selected the ones down here. Now to delete most things, you can switch to volumetric brush and it'll select pretty much delete everything within it. So if I click here and then shift click, it's selecting everything within the brush itself. So that's another great way of doing that. So, so as I have all of these selected, I can now go ahead and click on separate. And what separate will do as I hit accept is it'll create another mesh, which is disconnected. You can see that that's the original. And this is what I just extracted. So we can now work meticulously on this one to make it fit our metahuman as much as it needs to. So we can go ahead and send both of these back. And what we'll do is we are going to hide our metahuman and we're going to figure out if there are any issues. So for example, I noticed that this piece of cloth is kind of intersected with itself. And that is because of some of the work we did. It might actually be like that in the original. Yeah, it is like that in the original. So we are kind of going to uh, fly with that and we are going to apply simulations to this cloth. So we're not going to worry about that. But if you wanted to, you could start working on this and modifying it so it fits better. So let me show you just one little trick that we could use. What we are going to be doing is triangle edit. So now that we have it selected, we could just very gently, since it's a separate mesh, you can see that it's not connected, and just very gently move it. 
and we're gonna punch it forwards a little bit and at least the intersection is now cleaner right there's either no intersection or the intersection is way way cleaner just a little bit of intersection there but again we are going to be generating physics with it so we are not going to worry so this comes down to very meticulously thinking what we are going to be doing with our metahuman pieces with our metahuman character. So now that we have this, we could um, pretty much what we should do is actually go SM biking chest piece. And what we want to do is we are going to hide that because we need to continue working. So what we'll do next is with whatever was left, again, we're not going to do the globes because they're annoying. Although when the globes are separate, it's easier for, for us to just try and match them to the metahuman. So let's select and separate the legs. So we're going to go again into try select. I am not going to be bringing the axe I want that as a separate object. And I even want this little leather thing as a separate object too, because I don't want it to be um, skinned. I want it to be a solid object. So I'm going to keep all of that there and we are going to be separating that. So once we have that, we are going to once again hit separate and we're going to go find that and we're going to call this SM Biking Pants. We could, if we wanted to, separate the boots too. In this case, I won't do it, but we could if we wanted to. So you can see the idea, right? So let me finish it up and I'll be back with you. We have now officially separated the torso from the cape, from the boots and pants, and everything fits perfectly because everything was fitted through the control rig. And it's also everything in the zero. I've also separated the ax, which I will be using to attach it to the hand of the metahuman or, th or something like that. And the same thing with the shield that we could use to attach it to the back, but we don't want it to be using the metahuman skeleton. So how do we convert all of these into separate wardrobe items? Now I made a tutorial, an entire tutorial on it, but we're gonna just do it with one piece so we get the process. So what we'll do is the following. We are going to be creating a cloth asset for the chest piece. We are going to call this CA for cloth asset biking torso, keeping the same name that we have here. And what we'll do is we are going to be before we go into any of these, turning all of these pieces, all three of them, into skeletal meshes using the same skeleton that this guy here is using. So now that we've separated and created our two skeletal meshes with the metahuman that we use, the average, we need to go ahead and create very quickly the cloth assets for these, because these are the ones that we are going to then be turning into outfits as in this tutorial. So I am going to very quickly create one of these and then I'll come back once I have everything set up. So let's go ahead and create the first one together. So we're gonna delete everything, just in case you haven't watched the previous tutorial. We're just gonna drag and drop the skeletal mesh in. We are going to drive it into a skeletal mesh import node. That node is going to go into a transfer weights node. And then this is where we need to stop and do the very first thing. On the skeletal mesh of this transfer skin weights node, we need to use the metahuman combined body mesh that we were using before. And we see that we get a transfer weight failed. And that is because we have an issue with our cloth and the way we prepared it. Since we didn't go outside of the mesh, we can see that we do have some problems here, but let's continue and I'll, we'll fix it in a second. The final thing we need to do is go into a cloth terminal so we see what we're doing and this is what we get. What we'll do to fix this issue that we get here and let me show you what the issue is. In the preview details, we're gonna go for average and then we're just gonna go and run any walk animation. We see that there's clearly a problem. There's nothing being skinned correctly. So to fix that issue, we need to go down here and in the radius percentage, we can send this to 0.2 and then we can send the normal threshold to anywhere over 45 should get the trick. So now we get this and now we are actually working correctly. Obviously the animation might not be the best, but that is just for the purposes of the representation of what we're doing, which is great. So now it works and we get this. So we're gonna save it. I created that too for the pants. And the next step is going to be to create cloth outfits for both of them. So we're gonna do outfit. Asset, I will show you the first one very quickly and then I'll make everything else myself. This was again, done in another tutorial and this is going to be a recessable outfit so we're going to rapid fire this the only thing we need to do is here on the data flow overrides we're going to add one to the array and in here we're simply going to be adding in the source the average which is the body that we used and in the source asset we're going to be adding for this one the torso and we're going to make another one for the pants and there we go now we have the outfit i'll do the same thing for the pants and i'll be right back with you so now that we have our both cloth assets and outfits, we need to do the final one, which is a metahuman wardrobe item. So we're gonna call this MW for metahuman wardrobe, and this is going to be Viking torso, for example. 
And let's open it up. And this one is simple. On the principal asset, we need to bring the Viking torso, the outfit. We don't need to bring the cloth asset. We're going to bring the outfit in the pipeline. We're going to set it up for MetaHuman outfit pipeline. Scroll down and we are going to edit our pipeline, MetaHuman outfit editor pipeline. And then if we drill that down and go into outfit body hidden face map, this is very important because we are going to be hiding most of the body due to what we're doing. Now, if we've downloaded the tech wear outfit from fab, which is uh, right here, we have a new mask from it, which is not the default mask from the MetaHuman. So we can go and find tech wear and it's this guy here. So if we have this one in our project and I'll be adding it to the project right now so I can showcase what I mean, we can use the masks that comes with it, which is only leaving the hands in. Everything else is being masked. Now that will only apply to the body. It will not apply to the head, but I will be making a separate tutorial on how to hide a section of the head through the material and not through a wardrobe because we can't, as of right now, today do that kind of things. So in this tech wear outfit, we'll be finding a mask here. So if we, for example, now filter by textures, we'll see that at some point, one of these is gonna be a mask and it is right here. So tech wear body mask. And what we'll do is we can simply drag and drop that mask on the Viking torso. And that's gonna make it so it hides the entirety of the body except a couple of things there, which are just the hands. So I created the wardrobe for the uh, Viking torso. Let me do the legs. One difference with the pants, when we are applying a body hidden face map, we can't do it twice. So if you're applying it on the torso, do not apply it on the pants. Once is enough. So we're going to leave this one just as is. And now that we have both the MetaHuman wardrobe for the Viking pants and for the torso, I already created MetaHuman. And what we'll need to do right now, which is fairly simple, is go ahead and go into the hair and clothing section, scroll all the way down, and we are going to literally drag and drop both the torso and the pants. And we'll see as we double click on the torso first and then on the pants that our MetaHuman now has a full blown body of a biking setup. Now we do see a couple of issues here. This is because we did a very quick job while we were sculpting, but this is fixable on the sculpting step, right? Remember I actually moved the cloth out of the way and it looks great, but I didn't check the back. We should probably go ahead and check the back and do all the fixing, something like this. You'll see that the entire thing adapts to the body and we did torso and pants, and we extracted it from another character, which is a Viking, and we put it into MetaHuman as separate pieces of wardrobe. And remember, since we're using the mask, it is masking the body, so we will not see the body as we export. The thumbnails are still broken up to today, and I will be creating another video on how to mask the neck so we don't get this issue. If we did a better job with the chest piece, we wouldn't have this issue, but in case we just don't want to have that problem, we can mask the neck up to that specific point, and I'll be creating another tutorial soon. You're gonna end up seeing at the end of the day that after all we've done, MetaHuman Creator does things like this. So it kind of destroys sections. There's a whole explanation under documentation where they say how to fix this. It's non-applicable, it does not work. Um, so we have to do this kind of fixing ourselves. So that's sad, but it is what it is. And the way we fix this, this is the skeletal mesh that was exported from MetaHuman Creator, we're going to go into Edit Weights and we need to select those little vertices that are flying away into the distance. And what we need to do is figure out what's going on. And what's going on is that for whatever reason, this, well, not for whatever reason, because they were too close to this bone. So they had applied a whole bunch of weight painting from sections of this bone. So what we need to do is remove all, in this case, of the upper and lower arm bones influence on those vertices. And now that we've done that, we can hit Accept and we see that that was fixed. I'll investigate more, but from what I've known uh, on the past couple of days, this is the best solution. We gotta manually fix it. 